Today on 10 Minute IT Gems, we have Bet Chen, who is the co-founder of Akala. Um, Akala is the decentralized finance hub of Polkadot, and it provides financial applications and stable assets at scale. So uh, welcome to the Jam, Bet. Yeah, thanks uh, for having me, uh, Nick. Happy to be no here. No worries. Thank you. Um, so could you just give me a brief overview of what Akala is all about and who benefits from it? Um, so for Akala, we uh, specialize in uh, finance. Um, so we are one of the blockchains that are connected in the Polkadot ecosystem um, using you know, Polkadot's internet of blockchain technology to obviously communicate and also secure our network. But we uh, build applications specifically for finance. You can think about Akala more like your uh, banks, but it's decentralized, which, which means there's no uh, sort of uh, banking entity behind the scene. You can walk into Akala, uh, you know, open an account yourself, uh, borrow, uh, opening a loan, uh, you know, yourself, self-service. And not only that, uh, you can become a customer just uh, on your own. You can also be a co-owner or co-shareholder of the network uh, because of how a blockchain is set up, how Akala is set up. You can collectively govern um, everything happening on the network, including setting your own interest rate. So I'll, I'll stop there. I'm sure you have other questions that I can probably elaborate this further. Yeah, yeah. Um, you did mention like the decentralization um, of part of it. So yeah, that's the decentralized finance has kind of been a buzzword lately. So could you just explain what that is and um, how it comes into your industry? Uh, yeah, certainly. So. Uh, I, th I think this is a uh, revolution because um, for so long, you know, we've kind of very used to the internet that it is we are using today. Uh, you know, we are on our phone every day using uh, applications like Google, uh, Facebook, uh, Uber, Airbnb. Um, they are very convenient. They bring a lot of value to our everyday life, uh, but also at the same time, you know, uh, uh, probably not by intention, uh, they kind of become a central hub of people's data um, and also people's information. But also at the same time, those are in closed doors, held in closed doors and also be leveraged uh, closed doors, uh, meaning that uh, they are like a honeypot, like uh, our values are being extracted out of people's uh, data uh, because um, I think there's a dragon, a dragon uh, saying, uh, if the app is free, then you are the customer or you are, the, if the app is free, then you are the product, right? Um, so if you are using a free product, then the chances are your data is being extracted like oil uh, and making money, uh, certainly uh, most likely not for you, uh, but for the organization uh, behind the app. So that is the world that we are in uh, today. Um, in addition to the, I guess, the economic uh, uh, asymmetry that created, because most of those companies are probably, uh, uh, you know, uh, occupied 99.999% of the wealth of the world, uh, but they're not quite hiring as many people uh, as, you know, as, as the wealth that they occupy, but meaning that they're not kind of like sharing the wealth they are generated from uh, the people that they use the data from, basically. Um, so that's one sort of um, the current situation. And another situation is obviously the data. Um, people are not in control uh, of what they've created that's supposed to be uh, their own property, their own rights, um, not only data, but also wealth and value, right? That also comes down to the uh, fiat currency that we use. I think we're, we are very lucky here in New Zealand that we have almost like a perfect uh, or, or very transparent banking system and in government, but it's not quite like this everywhere else. We're almost living in a bubble. A lot of many other countries, they are uh, living in under uh, you know, very high economic and political uncertainty. And you will realize if you are in that situation, what is really yours? If, if things that's not in your hand, if it's in the bank, then tomorrow the bank can close the door or shut your account, then what, you know, you perceive as yours is probably not necessarily yours. So I think those are a few of the, you know, um, um, I guess, brewing uh, sort of challenges that we've been having today. What's free? Uh, uh, you know, revolution uh, or the blockchain technology is trying to flip their paradigm. Um, and, and, the, and the key word used, decentralization, is basically trying to flip that uh, centralized entity or centralized application, uh, you know, kind of accruing all the value, all the power, all the control. We try to flip that paradigm so that the power is now giving back to individuals. The individuals are 
you know, spread across the world. They are decentralized, right? Um, and then once you give the power back to people, they can then decide how they want to engage uh, with the community or with the platform. Um, and they are also entitled uh, to uh, whatever value that's been extracted out, out of that. Um, so yeah, so, so that is the decentralized revolution that we are in. And, and obviously finance is at the forefront of many of this because it is one of the industries that's been going on for a long time with a lot of these uh, sort of challenges without uh, too much like uh, uh, innovation happening. So uh, yeah, so that's my answer. Cool. Yeah, and kind of looking to the future, what trends are your product development teams focused on now or in the future? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, we, we all know, you know, like um, uh, Bitcoin is you know, going uh, globally and almost in everybody's daily conversations now, uh, you know, not, not only, you know, the Fortune 500s uh, are now using Bitcoin as a reserve currency. Um, and I also know some uh, New Zealand uh, uh, Kiwi saver um, and also uh, retirement funds are also looking into uh, Bitcoin uh, as one of their portfolio. Uh, assets, right? So, so then you know this Internet of Value is kind of making a huge debut uh, in the world, in the in a more serious like financial institutional world, and that's going to come to our daily life, you know, through all of this uh, end user products, I guess. Um, and at the same time, uh, you know, Ethereum is also making great uh, debut into the uh, finance world, like DeFi, and then more and more people understand now uh, what the values that brings. Um, but obviously, you know, like uh, the innovation is not going to stop there. Um, so we are about to see a, a sort of a full range of platform that launch is going to take this to a mass market because Ethereum can only serve uh, a very small uh, range of people due, due to its capacity. Um, so uh, the next huge thing, well, at, at least for, for my perspective, is like uh, the Polkadot um, and also a few like uh, 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 platforms is going to fully launch uh, this year. So that's going to be huge, huge uh, for the industry. And then for Polkadot, you can imagine the scale is one Polkadot network is going to have 100 Ethereum-like chains. So 100 Ethereum, like, and each one of them can specialize in an area. Akala is only one of them. We specialize in um, finance. And I also know uh, a blockchain is going to specialize in social network. Uh, and there's also uh, teams that's building uh, on uh, Internet of Things, IoT devices on their mobile phones. Um, and there's uh, also many other different applications that are being built. So you're going to see many, many innovations that are uh, not only reaching the media, but also probably reaching to the to the media very soon. Um, and then another trend I see in particular in the decentralized finance area is you will see uh, DeFi and CeFi uh, merging together. That's like a hybrid uh, finance and I call it hi-fi. Um, so basically you can imagine um, a, a platform like Akala, we're more like infrastructure provider um, uh, because a lot of the uh, instruments that we provide um, is gonna not gonna be that readily usable for my mom and dad. That's always my judgment, uh, how useful you are. Uh, but we are more like a backend you know, product or a settlement uh, or the instruments that people can build financial product on because we have exchanges, we have stable coin, we have staking derivatives. Um, so we are working with end user products. Uh, they are more, we, I call it centralized finance. They still have an entity, but they've got a great you know, uh, a user interface and also uh, taking care of jurisdiction differences. You know, we're still living in a world that a different jurisdiction will have different compliance and regulatory requirement. So then we can actually connect you know, the two ends together. So our product um, uh, can be, you know, kind of uh, uh, feed into other people's hands. Because the other day I saw an advertisement uh, saying, you know, and now come to, uh, you know, our branch open a savings account because the interest rate is very high at 0.5%. Um, uh, that doesn't sound very appealing, isn't it? So, uh, you know, for what if we could offer something uh, you know, like 5% um, and then encourage people to save $200 each month and you can have stable income um, and then take control of your own money um, and also have a good habit of uh, saving as well, right? So uh, that that is, or, or, you know, you could have dollar denominated saving account to put into, um, I guess, uh, a Bitcoin or some other, I guess, uh, hedging um, assets uh, to give people more variety 
uh, to uh, a, a brighter financial future. But obviously, you know, we can't do it alone. So uh, the, one of the trends is, is there's going to be a lot of different partnerships uh, across the border to actually make this happen. So. Right. Yeah. Cool. And um, finally, for you, Bet, what if an enterprise or end user wanted to engage with a Carlo? What's the best way to get in contact? Uh, yeah, so uh, that's easy. So we have a live test net, uh, uh, apps.akala.network. Uh, so people can go on there and try out the uh, decentralized bank uh, of the future or the present. Um, and then our uh, website is uh, akala.network uh, uh, or uh, join our Twitter. We're pretty active on there as well, uh, akala, akala Network. So, yeah. Ooh, perfect. Well, that concludes today's segment ITGM with Akala founder, Bet Chan. Thank you so much for joining me today, Bet. Thank you so much for having me, Nick.